The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another wonderful day at the headquarters of Technical Trading and Investing, TFNN.com. And uh, it is a beautiful April 29th down here at Lake Wobegon, Florida. Just a gorgeous day. And it uh, uh, it's the first day of summer. You know that day when you go out and that humidity just kind of socks you in the face. And you know that summer has come. It's, uh, of course, it's first of May. Yeah, you pretty much look at it. Uh, like I told to somebody I met, um, I don't know, six months, nine months ago, and just moved down here. I said, uh, you get basically eight perfect months of weather in Florida. And you have uh, two really hot months, you know, July and August. You have kind of two cold months, kind of yeah, maybe January, February. And the rest are perfect. So can you really complain? Eh, uh, what can you say? Uh, anyway, uh, to, to what else do we have going on here to start the show? Well, we're up 10 points on the S&P cash. Uh, actually have some decent volume for, for the first time uh, to the upside, 2.3 billion shares. And uh, we'll be watching out here. Uh, a lot of these stocks uh, that have reported uh, have not done well today. And uh, kind of interesting to see us up 10 points on the S&P cash. We're going to go through the ones that really moved today and uh, show you kind of the pattern uh, after earnings uh, that I've at least seen. And it's kind of interesting to see so many stocks fail and the market continue to move up. Uh, probably a good indication that there's a lot of money sloshing around uh, looking for a home anywhere. And uh, well, we'll continue to keep an eye out on it. Uh, as always, we like to start off with a little bit of history. In 1863, when, uh, William Randolph Hearst, one of the founders of the American media industry, is born uh, to George Hearst, a wealthy miner and rancher. Uh, basically, he won a newspaper uh, and uh, took it uh, as payment for a debt in a card game. Pretty much gave it to his son, and uh, his son turned it into a giant uh, uh, fledgling newspaper called the San Francisco Examiner and uh, ended up being, uh, what, I don't know, 50, 60 newspapers in the, all the major cities across the country. Uh, he basically said what the news was. And uh, if you uh, were a good friend to him, he'd write nice articles or have nice articles written uh, about you. Uh, truth didn't matter a whole lot. He was part of the Kennedy uh, Ford uh, Hearst Cabal, uh, these were, uh, talk about uh, what we're seeing uh, today or just lately in the last few days with this uh, owner of the basketball team. Uh, these guys were probably 100, 100 times more rampant. Um, Hearst uh, and Ford were more than happy uh, with uh, Hitler killing the Jews. Uh, boy, talk about uh, eh, 100 years difference uh, that we go through, but... Uh, if you've ever seen um, Orson's, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, at the very end of it, uh, there's a little part where he says, Rosebud, Rosebud, yeah, kind of considered one of the best movies of all time and certainly uh, broke the mold on what movies were supposed to be like in the United States. Most people think uh, Citizen Kane, especially in that era where you didn't have a lot of special effects, um, but uh, his use of new camera angles and uh, coming from actually being a uh, writer for um, radio serials uh, and, of course, War of the Worlds uh, on radio, he was very good at, uh, at understanding what people wanted. But uh, it is uh, it, uh, at the very end, he goes rosebud. And uh, that was uh, William Randolph's first nickname for his wife's rear end. And apparently he made no bones about uh, uh, what he liked in that uh, area. 
uh, to his uh, his uh, buddies. So eh, kind of interesting. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, he wrote and had huge amounts of articles written uh, that were complete and total lies. Uh, and uh, eh, if uh, he'd been on uh, uh, another side, a lot of people probably would have considered him uh, close to uh, a, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, that said, uh, if you repeat a lie uh, long enough, they'll believe it's the truth. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. I just saw a special on him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Joseph Goebbels, that's who it was. But, uh, yeah, born this day in 1863. Uh, lived a long life, as uh, so many rotten SOBs do. Uh, but uh, made an empire and also was a horrible person. Uh, probably the... Uh, guy that came closest uh, to being uh, as horrible as uh, Hearst was. Eh, I don't know if you can even say came close. Hearst was really, really rotten. Uh, probably a little less rotten, Steve Jobs, uh, but horrible human beings. And uh, Hearst probably just, eh, maybe Jobs is a five. Hearst was uh, a 10 on that, but uh, eh, I digress. And, of course, we've won a lot of awards for digressing on this show. Uh, we've talked about uh, FCC uh, proposal to destroy the uh, Internet. On May 20th, the FCC head is happened to, uh, headed to Capitol Hill, where it looks like they're going to extract a pound of flesh on what is going to be probably the most ridiculous um, argument that anybody has given uh, to Congress. And uh, I don't think he's uh, – I'm wondering if he won't do a – Hillary and fall and hit her head or hit his head or uh, get, uh, you know, a bad case of warts or something so he can dodge this. But uh, a lot of uh, congressmen ready to go uh, go after him fairly uh, head first uh, on the net neutrality. But uh, looking for fireworks on May 20th on this. It is a mad, mad, mad market. So I uh, ask that you call me. At 877-927-6648, uh, we'll take a look at your particular stock or maybe talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, today, we've got a lot of stocks to go through because uh, uh, just a ton of earnings. I posted in the den early this morning, the ones that are coming after the bell. We'll try to talk about that. It is Tuesday, so Andy will be back. I sent him um, a little uh, news clipping. Maybe he'll uh, comment on that, but uh, it is uh, very, very exciting. So uh, uh, I think one of the big news things. Uh, anyway, we're going to go right to earnings as fast as possible here. Uh, a lot of these stocks uh, pretty much uh, uh, are breaking through their trading uh, levels to the downside. They're a great deal more. Some of them came up, you know, one or two percent on earnings. Uh, not a big deal. But uh, the first one we want to get to is ABB uh, Limited. Uh, this stock did basically everything you expect. Gap down on the 22nd of January. Took all this time to get back up and try to get into that gap. Uh, yesterday, uh, back up with huge volume. Today, down with even higher volume in these trading ranges. And uh, you can kind of see why we get such huge whipsaw uh, in these markets. AGCO, which is an AGO corporation. Uh, another one of these stocks uh, trying to... Uh, eh, have a nice morning uh, on earnings. And of course, uh, pretty much a full reversal and a filling of the gap. This thing was going after the December 27th high at 5942. Uh, didn't quite get there today, but certainly uh, big reversal days, even though these stocks were up in the morning. And of course, we've had a fairly decent uh, move up uh, in the S&Ps, uh, the actual futures themselves. Uh, we'll look at a little bit less different. Uh, what do we have here? Up nine and a half points on the S&P cash. So uh, BP, another one of these stocks, very interestingly enough, uh, you want to be watching this one. It has come back and filled its gap uh, today. Uh, that gap happened on uh, March uh, 3rd. Uh, it came down with uh, 9.8 million shares. Uh, we're into it with about 5.1 million shares, pretty much filling the gap up here on the high side. But uh, certainly not a great deal of volume when we look back at some of these gaps. Uh, CCJ, uh, this one's got a nice little uh, Gartley uh, pattern on it that uh, came up. 
uh, kind of interesting, actually. I really like this sector. I'm just not real high on the market yet, but uh, probably the best looking Gartley pattern out here in stocks these days. So I'll be keeping a, a big eye on it if this thing, or maybe the market decides to kind of turn around out here. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Cummings. Cummings came out with earnings, another one of these stocks trying to break out through the highs. Certainly, it looks like it's going to have the volume today. Uh, you needed 2.1 million shares from the April 4th high at $151. And uh, what is that? Uh, yeah, $151 even. And that was on the April 4th high, 2.1 million shares. Uh, broke through it. It's going to close below it and probably with higher volume. So a lot of these things are, are kind of weird. Uh, talk about your inner day reversals out here. I've been catching a few of these, uh, trading them, uh, uh, and maybe if you are day trading these, it looks like just any of these stocks that bounces a little, uh, they come off fairly quickly uh, on earnings. And I've caught a couple of these things far too fast for, uh, anything we do in a newsletter, but, uh, I am going to show this pattern out here. Uh, Diebold, uh, opened up a little over a Wait a minute, forty dollars, forty cents, something like that. What was it? One high a day, forty dollars twenty five cents. Uh, got a few pennies higher than that. Uh, but uh, talk about a huge reversal day and dark cloud uh, uh, cloud covering. Uh, this thing has wiped out uh, pretty much all the trading uh, till we get back to the last sign of strength, which is on uh, February thirteenth. Uh, and uh, probably coming back down into support area uh, right around, what, 35 and a half, something like that. Uh, and of course, today's not over 2 million shares uh, today, but uh, a lot of wide-ranging moves in uh, these stocks. In other parts in, uh, of interest, uh, if you listen to the show long enough, uh, you know I sent out a special report. Uh, I think uh, DDD Systems was somewhere in the uh, mid to upper 90s at the time, and I said, you've got to really watch out for this right now. Uh, this 3D uh, area sector looks like it's done. And uh, we had some huge moves off of it. In the daily newsletter, I think we caught this one a couple of times, some of the other 3D companies too. And uh, we'll look at those maybe later in the show. Uh, but uh, certainly a huge <clears throat> move uh, in uh, uh, 3D. And uh, this certainly looks like it's going to go back uh, fairly far. Now, one of the things uh, I think I heard uh, Steve Rhodes talking this morning about watching uh, CNBC occasionally, and he watches it more for entertainment. I watch it more for probably uh, what uh, people don't say and what people are doing. Uh, I really disliked it up here because uh, the CEO was out hawking his stock about I probably thought I saw him three times in one week. And, uh, you know, you really want to be working on people that will buy your stuff, not people that are going to buy your stock. Anyway, we'll be back and talk about that in a little bit. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we come back, uh, got some email that I'll answer here at the next break. Uh, but uh, interesting day out here, uh, certainly in the markets. And of course, uh, you know, up 10 points on the S&P cash. Kind of stuck here at this 10-point level. Of course, tomorrow at 2.15, we have the FOMC meeting uh, and uh, report. I don't think there's a question and answer uh, meeting tomorrow. So I think 12.15, I mean 2.15 Eastern time, uh, right smack dab in my show. Do they have no, do they have absolutely no idea that I do this show? They probably don't. But anyway. How rude of them. Uh, anyway, we were talking about 3D Corporation, and I brought this up a couple of times in stocks where I've noticed that uh, the bottom has fallen out of these uh, big high flyers. And there is uh, something uh, to it. And uh, I'm, it seems like it's always uh, right before the thing blows up that you see them uh, out and about, uh, especially on CNBC. Um, if they're out at earnings or out because of a new product, uh, I think that's one thing. Uh, if they're out there hawking their stock, uh, I think that that tends to be a lot different. I've seen a few CEOs really hawk their stocks. One was uh, MCP. Um, great story on this thing, but they ran it up to 79 bucks. And uh, from about 60 to 79 bucks, these guys couldn't, they were worse than the worst, uh, uh, TV guy that can't pass a, a TV without talking to it, talking head. He was everywhere uh, for the last 20 bucks of that, pushing the stock up. And uh, normally that's a really bad sign. So uh, if you do watch CNBC, normally what you want to be watching for, uh, not so much as what they say, uh, but when they're saying it, 
And if they're out there a lot uh, pushing their stock when there isn't a whole lot to talk about, uh, and it's a hot stock and a high flyer, and they're flogging it, uh, get ready. Because normally uh, when they do that, um, uh, they're basically cashing in their own uh, options on it or deciding uh, on a way to get out of it, or probably uh, in the case of the MCP guy, probably doing a little uh, fiscal shenanigans. You just have to watch uh, what they're doing out there. Anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, or you can email me at path at tfnn.com, and you can post in the den if you want me to look at a particular stock. Uh, what else do we have out here? I want to go through all these in alphabetical order so I don't miss many of them because we've got a ton. We've got about another two and a half minutes here uh, in this segment. But uh, and some of these moving a little less uh, on earnings. But HCH holdings, uh, off a little bit. I wouldn't call this the end of the world. Uh, you know, it was worse this morning. It's down to, uh, what, low was 50, what, one low of the day, 49 uh Nine, uh, yeah, forty nine ninety one uh, today, and it's come back a little bit back out here. Uh, but a lot of these stocks, uh, what I want to get through is just how many reported this morning uh, and found problems. Uh, now, Kulik and Safa Click, uh, of course, trying to bust through its previous high, needed one point nine million shares. Tried to go through it, and it looks like any time we hit these highs, you find just the absolute. Uh, uh, storm of sellers uh, at previous highs. In this case, the same thing. You needed to hold 1370 today on click KLIC. Uh, got to 1398. Uh, it looks like we're probably going to have enough volume to at least match that previous high. Uh, but the question is whether you can hold it. And uh, we're going to show you some charts later about how many of these stocks had some bad days. Uh, I mean, wow, look at that one. Uh, uh, Rainier, R Y N. This thing fell, you know, what, from 60 bucks down to 39 already. Uh, kind of moving around uh, at these lows. Um, had earnings also down, uh, what, a buck and a half or something today. Uh, but, uh, you did see a sign of strength out here, uh, starting on the 27th of January. This thing's been bouncing along that gap for a while. Last time, 1.1 million shares. Uh, my guess, though, these things are probably going to come back into that and fill a lot of that gap. And uh, that may be one that you might be interested as a comeback story on it. Sprint, Nextel, one of the few uh, that actually are up today also on earnings. Uh, had a nice little bounce out here. Uh, energy's just about the same uh, up and down. Uh, you did get to a lower low yesterday with lighter volume. You were going up against uh, the February 5th low with 58 million shares. And you had uh, what? 58 million shares. You had 37 million shares. Nice bounce today. Volume is increasing. So uh, one of the good looking ones out here from earnings sprint. We'll be right back after this message. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, uh, interesting day out here. And, of course, uh, if, uh, if uh, anything, we have a little Schadenfreude. I don't even know if I'd call it that. Uh, Mary Jo White, the head of the SEC, is being flogged today, uh, and uh, she uh, yeah, running around telling everybody how the market is not rigged, uh, but uh, they're grilling her just the same. We've talked about uh, what she said, and basically she's, uh, I think she's cashing out. Uh, uh, Colorado's Ed uh, uh, Perlmuter, I guess that's it. Uh, virtual finance said in five years they had one day of trading losses. Uh, uh, it said uh, there seems to be a definite advantage for a firm that can uh, operate five years without any trading losses. And uh, he met actually virtue, a high frequency trade uh, company. Of course, a lot of these guys, eh, not so uh, up on the facts, but uh, probably some of their buddies had given them or their uh, underlings had given them. Uh, some talking points out here. Uh, but uh, eh, taking enough heat, maybe she will do enough stuff. But my guess is she does her a couple of years and leaves uh, to go out and give uh, cover for somebody else, just like uh, what is this latest trading deal. The previous SEC chairman ended up being the lawyer for uh, Ackerman, I think. So yeah, I think it's uh, just cronies. Uh, whether or not uh, they had a personal uh, level of uh, of uh, ethics 
that uh, pretty much vanishes when you go to Washington. Uh, but it is. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da. Yeah, anyway. Uh, oh, we're going to go back to some more charts out here. Uh, just wanted to, I think I bypassed it, was Coach. Uh, Coach came out uh, with earnings. And uh, yeah, what can you say? Down. This thing's been going down for a while. Uh, if we go back in and look at it, been in a down channel uh, with lower lows uh, and uh, higher volumes on those lows. Certainly looks like uh, this 4431 is open season for Coach out here. And, uh, and what are we already to 46? So another buck and a half or so. Probably not a big deal out here. So, uh, yeah, it would be that. Uh, we looked uh, at uh, Sprint, yeah, and Save. Spirit Airlines, another one of these that came out with earnings this morning, which is our theme for today. Uh, anyway, uh, down with some more volume. It looks like this thing uh, would probably go down 53.25. Uh, a lot of these airlines not doing so well in this latest round of earnings. Uh, and Comscore up a little bit today. Not a lot of volume on this, but uh, certainly a good pattern. This thing broke out with heavy volume on the 11th of February. And uh, if you bought the absolute bottom of this gap fill, um, you probably would have been a little happy today. But uh, pretty much a lot of those are that way. Uh, slab, a lot of these... Uh, uh, Silicon uh, chip manufacturers, and of course, Silicon Laboratories uh, does do that. Uh, again, we're talking so many of these huge gaps uh, that came up with volume on this case was the 29th of January when this thing came up with 1.3 million shares. We are going through that with heavier volume on the way down today and uh, look for the rest of that gap down to 4280. Uh, to get closed up, I would imagine, fairly soon. But you're probably at least somewhere in the level of uh, a, uh, uh, what would I say, a uh, level of support. Uh, since uh, Senseda Technologies Holdings, SD symbol, uh, another one off uh, these highs down. Volume not picking up on this one. Uh, so you might look at that for some interday play. TRW, this thing had gone... Uh, off its highs, and not a lot of play in that one. Looked a little different this morning. Uh, United Bank shares, another one off today. Uh, UDR, which is uh, eh, a little bit off. UTHR, United Therapeutics, uh, another one eh, up a little bit up here today. Uh, but again, we're not seeing a lot of volume in these up moves uh, for the few stocks that do have them. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But United Therapeutics, um, what I dislike about this one, heavier volume uh, to the downside, downside close yesterday. Um, but uh, we're going to get on to the theme of this uh, in just a minute. And uh, that's Marriott. Uh, Valero, I wanted to see how this one did. Uh, Valero, uh, another one that's uh, kind of reversed off its highs this morning, closed back below yesterday's lows. Volume pretty light out here yet, too. Maybe Andy will tell us more about the crack spread, which I think uh, VLO is the crack spread king uh, out here. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, even when you get these bounces, about half these things are rolling back under and closing below uh, most of the yesterday's tradings. Uh, probably one of the most interesting ones for me out here was Waters Corporation. And uh, I just want to read the profile out here so you know. Uh, is an analytical instrument manufacturer in the United States and internationally. Company designs, manufactures, and sells and services high performance liquid chrom uh, chromatograph. Um, and uh, they had a couple of these at TFNN. And uh, now that most people are not reselling their gold, there are a ton of these uh, uh, items to test all kinds of chemicals, but a lot of them. Uh, in that uh, area of testing gold, gold purity, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm wondering just how much uh, that uh, we're seeing the kind of volume and off-the-top volume uh, with Waters Corp that uh, is setting up something uh, much longer out here. So uh, we will keep an eye on that. And let's see what do we got here. Eh, some earnings previews. Uh, and WWW. And uh, we'll talk about that here today. 
And uh, we do have a phone call, so we'll go to Dan. How are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing well. How's it going, Dave? Good. Hey, uh, question for you. I have a position in UVXY. Uh-huh. It's uh, 5780. And I wanted to see what you thought about a stop on that. Uh, we're getting below, even though I know it's a double leveraged, double leveraged product, so you can't yeah. really, you know, go off of previous lows. But it's getting getting below four, 54.50, and I was getting a bit concerned. But it looks like it's not going on a high volume. Your, your trade with the level of uh, of uh, if you bought it at 57 bucks, you probably would be uh, and want to be out of that thing probably around 51 bucks. You're going to have to take on that one. You're, it's highly volatile. You're not going to be able to put a like a five percent stop on it like you would a stock. You're going to have to. No, it, you're, you're going to have to have a very wide ranging uh, move on that. But probably the nicest thing is uh, it's almost impossible for volatility to get any lower. So uh, right. you probably it's this isn't like a regular stock where uh, suddenly uh, the company goes bankrupt. Um, there's a level of volatility you just can't get under. And uh, that's going to probably be about 12 on the actual VIX that this is supposed to represent. So uh, this is one of the most interesting trades out here in that if you just hold it long enough, you'll probably do okay. And uh, so uh, it, is, yeah. it, is, it is one of those uh, instruments that is kind of weird. It's kind of like gold or some other commodity where uh, there's a price of production. And as soon as that price gets breached, um, you know, people quit built and making it because they're losing money and the cost comes back up at least to the cost of production. And uh, the problem is if you get down with volatility levels uh, like now in the 13s and the VIX, uh, you almost always get some kind of spike out of here. So I wouldn't worry about it too much if you if you uh, don't like uh, 57 bucks was probably 57.50, probably a little high, but uh, it's uh, you probably had some opportunities to buy it lower than that. But it's uh, yeah, you're probably going to have to go to 51 on it, um, and that probably should have been your stop to begin with. I don't know what you were thinking. Did you have a stop that you were th looking at? I was, well, I got in. I considered, you know, I figured it at least hit 56. Yeah. Um, but then I was going to give it until about 54 and change, which was about the lows that I had. Yeah, but, it would be different if the VIX could go to zero. Right. But... Basically, uh, the VIX is the out of the money puts and calls on the S and P 500. Yep. So nice. as soon as people start giving those away for free, you have to worry about some serious downside. But that serious downside probably stops on the VIX itself right around here. I mean, you might be able to get down to 12, but that would be incredibly tough. So well, not a bad area to be in this thing. Uh, and of course, the one thing you have to know is that you can get five, ten day uh, move, uh, five, ten uh, dollar move up days when uh, everything turns around. So uh, it's one of these that you just uh, going to have to sit on for a while. Yeah, no, that's fine. I have traded this before, but I just, I guess maybe I should have worded the, the question a bit differently. As far as hey, where maybe I guess it is even a better, better thing of gauging that to the S and P or you know general market of um, a trend reversal to confirm when we're in a trend reversal and maybe uh, get out of that. So um, I, think I don't think so. Stop is still basically, uh, if you are buying something like this, you are betting on insurance. And uh, just like the insurance companies uh, are betting uh, that there isn't a hurricane down here in Florida, you as a home builder are, or a homeowner are. The difference is you know the hurricane's probably going to come. Right. And if you just sit on your hands long enough, that insurance will probably pay off if you're down on the uh, waterfront here in Florida. And uh, that is one of these things is that the volatility does not seem to go away in the market for any length of time. Uh, maybe this will be different. But the last time I saw uh, serious volatility uh, go away from the market for years and months uh, was like 2000 or excuse me, 1907 to 19. Oh, nine. There was like a two year period when not much happened in the market, 1910. But since then, a uh, pretty good bet betting that one day, depending on how fast you want your money, uh, that uh, betting on volatility is pretty good bet. Right. 
So, you know, the problem is that a lot of people want your money and want it now, especially on volatile ETFs. And uh, sometimes uh, it's just a waiting game and, uh, uh, you know, the patient main can it make money. You just need to know what you're trading and how it's trading. But uh, VIX off, what, uh, 31 cents today? Uh, that's a pretty minor move for eight points. You're also going into a FOMC meeting. So my guess is if you're really nervous about this, you don't want to be it any longer, uh, you're probably going to get an opportunity tomorrow uh, morning, probably after 10 o'clock. The VIX is probably going to rise into that FOMC meeting, and you can punt it then. All right. Because that VIX, I'll guarantee you the option premium will go up ahead of the FOMC meeting. And uh, it is both puts and calls. So even if people start getting wildly bullish, start buying those calls, the premium will go up uh, and your uh, VIX will go up too. And you'll pretty much uh, get what you want. Get out of there maybe at 56 or 57 if you don't like the heat. Well, you know, I've made some good money on it uh, in the past. It's, on a, it's a great trader. So yeah, yeah. you can't do that. But it, it's the, the ability for the VIX to go back down much lower than 12 uh, pretty low. So, you know, it's, uh, can you get it? Yeah. You'd have to go up like five points on the S and P cash every day for five, uh, for about 30 days. So, and two, there's, especially when you trade some of these, uh, other, uh, indexes, uh, especially the VIX, you have to know that there's a 15 and 30, uh, 45 day window. That is when you get within 15 days of, uh, the S and P 500, uh, options expiring, it goes into the next month. So you can be actually uh, basically out the at least 15 to 30 days and then maybe 60 days on the long term because it actually is the volatility between the upfront month as long as there's 15 days left and the next month after it. And there's a formula to put both of those together. So no. uh, when you're looking at the options, a lot of times people – make the mistake of looking at the VIX and go, eh, that's no big deal. But it may not just be the front month options. You need to see what's happening in the next month uh, options that are coming up if there are less than 15 days. So a lot of times you can actually be looking at them. And you go, well, that VIX doesn't seem like it's moving much. But, of course, in the last 15 days, you're already on to the next month. All right, because so, this is a midterm, right? There's three, there's three different uh, indices Right. VIX there's a, there's a long-term one, but it doesn't seem to do much. <laughs> the problem is by the time you get around there, as soon as you have some huge spike in volatility, normally that doesn't last long and then you get out of it. So what you normally will have when this thing really pays off to the long side is uh, a uh, constant just nosebleed in the market that just never stops. So... The nice thing about this is you can always, you know, you can look at a market where you get a surprise and you make 100% or you lose 5 or 10% if you right. trade correctly. Okay? Cool, Dave. Thanks, man. Okay, thanks. Back in just a minute. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Join Andy Hecht as he teaches you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. And I have a question from Greg, who doesn't tell me where he's from. And he's looking at uh, Vale, V-A-L-E. And uh, I guess a potential Gartley in it. I don't know what uh, he's looking at or what level of Gartley. It doesn't look like uh, has it. Okay, he's asking, has it formed a Gartley buy? And no, it is not a Gartley, at least uh, not to uh, what uh, uh, everybody that I know of has uh, uh, at least considered the formula for a Gartley. Uh, and uh, yeah, you've... I mean, you could be starting one here, but you still have a lot farther to go. But uh, you have uh, you have basically succession of higher highs and lower lows out here from uh, uh, what is that? Uh, the uh, uh, January twenty seventh. So this thing's just getting wilder and wilder, and it's moves out here now. If you look at it. Uh, you're basically coming you know, you touched uh, the gap up from 321 uh, that had uh, 28 million shares with 23 million shares. So you're getting a little bounce out of here. But, uh, uh, you know, if I was looking at anything, maybe this thing bounces to 1420 or something. Uh, but that's about it. Certainly doesn't look very promising. So I don't know if I'd be long that or anything else. No. Uh, 
Okay. And let's see what else. Oh, we looked at the WW. Anyway, uh, just wanted to say that we were looking at a lot of these um, earnings movements out here. Now, after the bell, uh, probably TWTR Twitter uh, is going to be one of these uh, that looks like uh, it will be interesting. And that is just, uh, I just killed a gnat. Uh, it, interesting in that it has a high volume low from yesterday. Now, of course, nothing's really been going too well for Twitter lately and not exactly sure why this is bouncing up here other than the uh, uh, general market. Uh, but we're going to be looking at that after the bell. Uh, PN, Panera, PNDA, isn't it? Was that Panda? I'm trying to remember. Uh, in the morning, uh, Panera. E-N, what is that? Hang on a second. Pandora, P-N-R-A, excuse me, thanks. Oh, thanks, Joe in the den. P-N-R-A. Uh, and I actually posted all these. I should actually have my list all ready to go. This one's uh, basically been breaking through the $64 level. It's down to a low yesterday, 159.38, doing a little better today. Uh, but certainly it looks like so many of these stocks are going back there and at least touching, if not filling, these back big gaps. And in the case of uh, Panera, I think what you have is uh, any disappointment is going to take this right to 150.33. Uh, if you get a bounce out of this up to 170 uh, in the volume slide, I'd probably take it for the short back down to that 150. 33. If we uh, look a little bit longer out here, uh, that gap comes back all the way to the uh, 25th of June uh, 2012. And that thing had some, what is that monster volume out there? 2.9 million shares. So uh, got to be fairly decent support right around that 150, 152 level. So we'll have to watch that after the bell. Got a few others. Um, anyway, uh, what, how much time we have left? Oh, just about out of it. We're going on to Andy Heck, and uh, maybe he'll make some comments out of one of the biggest disasters. Du jour. I sent him the email today. Maybe he'll comment on it. Anyway, hope you all have a great and safe and wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.